Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Broderick Crawford in tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the story of a man whose welcome home party promised little gaiety and many tears, and surely his death. It's called Parole to Panic. Our star, Mr. Broderick Crawford. This is Harlow Wilcox reminding you that there's no time like right now to enter the giant Autolite family charity drawing. $100,000 in cash is waiting to be distributed to the recognized local or national charities chosen by the 25 persons selected in this great event. You may be one of those persons. To enter is as simple as printing your name and address. Listen to this on-the-spot interview with a woman in Connecticut. Hello, I'm Bob Emmerich. What's your name? Mrs. Alan Gulliver. I understand that you signed up for this drawing here at this Autolite family car dealer, Salvatore Brothers. Is that right? That's right. Did you find it difficult? Absolutely not. I signed my name and address on a registration form, and that was it. Was there any obligation of any sort? None whatsoever. I see. Well, thank you very, very much, Miss Gulliver. Thank you. So, friends, visit any or all of these Autolite family car showrooms. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Sign up tomorrow. And now, Autolite presents transcribed Mr. Broderick Crawford in Parole to Panic, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Yeah. Pretty good, huh? Not bad. Not bad at all. Enjoy it. Hmm? What I mean is, don't come back here. It's a pretty good life out there. Well, I won't be back. Two years is enough for me. Taking the train to town? No, I don't think so. My wife's supposed to pick me up if she can borrow a car. Well, good luck. Uh, it's not going to be easy for you. Yeah, I know. If there's anything I can do, if you need someone to talk to, advice, you know. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Warden. Thanks for seeing me to the door. I like you, Paul. Don't let me down. I won't. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. waiting long? No. Only a couple of seconds. I was so afraid to drive fast. This is our car, you know. Our car? I bought it yesterday. It's for you. Oh. Sort of a coming out present, huh? Don't joke, Paul. Don't ever joke about being in prison. Well, what do you want me to do? Cry? No. Because that's what I know you're doing when you joke about it. Come on, let's sit in the car. I still feel kind of funny about all this space to move around in. All right. Slide in on this side. You drive. Okay. Where'd you get the money to buy a car? I only had to make the down payment on it. We'll manage the rest. Uh, I'll manage the rest. What? Well, I don't know if this is the time to talk about it, but I'm going to have to find a job. Can't have you taking care of me, you know. Oh, that's all taken care of. It is? Yes. I told my boss what you knew about fixing radios and what you'd done while you were in the Army, and he arranged a job for you at the plant. Did you tell him where I'd been for the past two years? Yes, Paul. Oh. I... I don't know how I ever got mixed up with that gang, Jenny. Let's not talk about it. Too bad the district attorney didn't get them all while he was at it. It's over, dear. Let's forget it. There are other things to think about now. Jenny. Yes? I love you, Jenny. I love you very much. I'm so glad, dear. Shall we go home now? Yes. Let's. You tired? No, no, I feel great. Do you realize you've driven all the way from... 
from that place in only two hours? Well, it's not me, Jenny. It's the equipment. You got a real good deal here. <laughs> Mr. Miller found it for me. Does he still have the same store? Yes, why? Well, I've got to see him right now. After you report to the parole officer. No, no, no. He said I had to report to him before I went home, but he didn't say anything about seeing Mr. Miller. But, Paul... Oh, now, don't worry. It'll only take a minute or two. Well, all right, but only a minute or two. Promise? Yeah, I promise. Mrs. Gordon. And, uh, what can I... Paul! Jenny! How are you, Mr. Miller? Well, Paul, it's good to see you. Well, well, you look fine. I feel fine, too. I just dropped by to thank you for taking care of Jenny while I was gone. You know, the groceries and... Uh, not, I... not, not another word, Paul. You and Jenny are like my own. Besides, as soon as Jenny got a job, she paid me back. Well, anyway, thanks. Nah. <laughs> now, let me, let me look at you. Mm -hmm. You're a good boy, Paul. Everything will be happy again. Yeah, sure it will. Uh, tell Roger I was here and I'll see him later, will you? Tell him yourself. What? <laughs> He's here in the back room. Uh, Roger. Never mind, never mind. I'll go back there. All right. I won't be long, darling. <laughs> good. Hi, Roger. Oh. Paul, come in. Come on in. Well, it's good to see you, Paul. Yeah, to be here, too. When'd you get back? I just drove into town. I'm sorry I couldn't do better for you at the trial. Oh, you did fine. I don't know what would have happened to me if you hadn't defended me. Look, as soon as I get some money and a job, I'll, I'll pay you. Oh, relax. No hurry. Uh, Paul? Yeah? Uh, you talked to anyone since you got back? I mean, outside of pawn me. Oh, no, I just told you. I just drove into town. Why? Well, you know the DA didn't get the whole gang when they lowered the bloom. Yeah, sure. I know that. Well, uh, there's a rumor going around that they're waiting for you when you get out. Why? What have I done? They say you turned state's evidence. But I didn't. I only told them the truth about what I knew. I know that, but they don't. All right, then I'll tell them. You're not going to have a chance to do it. Why not? Uh, I understand this is only what I've heard through the grapevine. But I hear they're going to shoot first and then ask questions. Well, then what am I going to do? I don't know. Maybe I can get somebody to take a message for me. Paul. What? Paul, they won't believe anything you say. Why not? Because they don't want to believe you. They're looking for a pigeon. Oh, and I'm it, huh? You're it. You think I ought to leave town? Why don't you go to the police? They put you under protective custody. What am I going to tell them? Just what I told you that I heard. No, 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 Roger. If the police followed every crackpot rumor they heard, they'd run themselves ragged. But this isn't a crackpot rumor. They don't know that. No, but we Look, know... I'm going to get out of town. Jenny's got enough money to keep us going for a while. Well... Keep in touch. If you need anything, just let me know. Yeah, sure, I will. Thanks. Sorry, I can't help more. Well, there's nothing more you can do, Roger. So long. Bye. Where are we going? Home, to pack. Well, what for? We're leaving town. Why? Why are we leaving town? Well, they're after me. What? Who's after you? The rest of the gang. Well, what did you do? I told the truth in court. They call it ratting, singing, squealing. Just take your choice. Oh, who told you all this? Roger Miller. But what about your job? I can't keep it if I'm dead. Oh, there must be something we can do. Yeah, there is, and we're doing it. We're getting out. Look, Paula, are you sure about all this? I'm not going to wait for a bullet to make me certain. Well, all right, if you think it's best. I can't take the chance that I could be wrong. This happened so quickly that i got to get out of town, even if it's just so I can think clearly. Do they know you're back in town? No, no I, I, I don't think so. That's why we better hurry. Well, where out of town are we going? I don't know. All I know is I'd better get out if I want to stay alive. I've got to get the overnight bag filled here. Let me see. This is it, I guess. 
What else do you need? Well, I'm all set here. How about your clothes? Oh, I don't know if they still fit, but I pack what suits look to be in shape. You ready? Yes. Oh, are you sure, Paul? Are you sure Roger was right? He could be wrong. Yeah, you know? Sure, he could be, but. Hello? Hello, Paul. Who is this? You're going to die today, Paul. Who, who was it? They know, Jenny. They know I'm back in town. I'll be right back. Mr. Miller. Oh, what is it? You look so... Where's Roger? He went to court. He has a case today. Why? Doesn't make any difference. Look, Mr. Miller, do you have a gun? A gun? Yes, I have a gun, but I... All right, give it to me. What? I need a gun, Mr. Miller. Please let me have it. You don't know what you're doing, Paul. A gun. I'm sorry, but Mr. I can't... Mr. Miller, think... please. It's my life. I gotta have a gun. But why? I haven't got time to explain now. Ask Roger when he gets back. He'll tell you all about it. I have a permit. He'll want to know where you... It'll be all right. Just give me the gun. Please, I gotta hurry. You say Roger will tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll tell you. Please, Mr. Miller, hurry. Yeah. All right. Here, Paul. I'm doing a wrong thing, but if Roger says it... Be careful, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Why did you have to stop there? I had to get something. What? A gun. Oh, Paul. You're on parole. If they catch you with a gun... They won't catch me. As soon as we're out of town, I'm going to ditch it. Oh, Paul, isn't there a chance Roger might have been wrong? Maybe they've forgotten about you. No, not with that telephone call I got just before. Jenny. Yes, Paul? We're being followed. Well, how do you know? I know. Watch when we go around the corner. Watch that blue sedan about a half a block and back. See him? All right, now watch the next corner. Well, Jenny? Yes. They're following us, Paul. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Broderick Crawford with Paula Winslow in... Parole to Panic, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Now, we'd like you to hear a recording of another on-the-spot interview in connection with the Autolite family charity drawing, this time with a policeman in Bronxville, New York. And what is your name, officer? Patrolman James Morris at the Bronxville Police Department. I understand that you've signed up for the Autolite family charity drawing. Is That's that right. right. Uh-huh. And uh, should your name be selected, how would you care to designate the money? I would split it three ways. Cancer Fund, Heart Fund, and Bronxville PBA. Very fine. And may I wish you good luck. Thank you very much. Why don't you help your favorite local or national charity, too? It won't cost you a cent, and you have an opportunity to be among the 25 persons selected. Remember, there's nothing to try or buy, nothing to write or solve. All you do is visit any Autolite family car dealer showroom and fill out a registration form. So why not visit any one or all of these car dealers? DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. There's not much time left, so sign up tomorrow. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Broderick Crawford with Paula Winslow... In Elliot Lewis's presentation of Parole to Panic, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Okay. They're still following us. What are they doing? Torturing me? They can follow us this closely, they can catch us anytime they want to. 
Oh, go to the police, Paul. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid of the police. It's, it's what's in the back of us that I'm afraid of. Well, then let the police take care of them. Don't you see? If I go to the station and stop the car, they'll blast before I get to the front door. That's why they're following us so closely. But they... They have to be crazy. Yeah, they are crazy. But if I stop, I'll be dead and they'll still be crazy. No. No, we gotta lose them. Then we'll figure out something. You see him? Uh, no. Good. I, I think we lost him this time. What do we do now? Well, we're almost out of gas. We'd, we'd better stop. Well, all right. But I... But what? Oh, call the police. Tell them what's happened. I intend to, Jenny. This is pretty open country. I guess we'd better stop at the first station we see. I'll, I'll telephone while, 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 while they're filling the tank. Well, I, I'm starting to feel a little better. Yeah, so am I. Oh, Paul, there's a station. Yeah, I see it. What'll it be? Fill her up, will you? Right, sir. Say, you've got change for a quarter? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Here. Help yourself. Okay. Ten, twenty, twenty-five. Here's your quarter. Just drop it. All right. Say, where's the phone? Back to the station. Thanks a lot. Operator. Operator, I want the police. Yes, my name is... Paul! Paul, they just drove past. I think they saw the car. What? They're stopping down the road. Come on. 14 already, mister. I don't think she'll take much more. Hey, Jenny. Jenny, they're turning around. Hey, mister, you didn't wipe it. Hey! Hey! Hey, what are you trying to pull? Hey! Hey! How big five is how? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Jenny... Jenny. Oh. Jenny, what? listen to me. What is it? This car isn't fast enough to stay away from me. Well, then what'll we do? I'm going to turn in the first side road we come to, and then you're getting out. No. No, I won't do it. You've got to. You've got to. I, I can't. I'm not getting out of the car. Jenny, they'll kill you, too. I don't care. I've been away from you long enough. All right, then we'll keep going. Do you know where we are? Yeah. Yeah, there's no way we can get back to town from here. Well, it'll be dark soon. I know that. Maybe we can get away then. Catch up to us before dark. The catch us any time they want to. Paul. Paul, do you know where we are? I told you before. Jenny. No, no. I mean, you remember the cabin where we spent a weekend the first winter we were married? Yeah, why? Well, it, it was on a road that turned off the... Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. We got that cabin from one of the boys, you remember? Yes, but it's better than sitting in the car and waiting for them. Okay, let's go. You remember where the side road was? Well, it, it's pretty soon now. I just... Just past the bridge, I think. Oh, Jenny, I hope you're right. Oh, I do too, Paul. I do too. I don't have a key. Oh, I'll kick it in. Hurry, Paul. I hear them. Yes, yeah, so do I. Step back, Jenny. All right, stay away from the windows. There's enough light yet for him to shoot. Let's push this table against the door. Come on. Okay. Here they are. Okay, Jenny. You stand over there. As soon as I come up the steps, I'm going to start shooting. Maybe... Maybe they're afraid. No, they couldn't be. Because they know I am. What are they waiting for? I don't know. I haven't even gotten out of the car yet. Do they know you have a gun? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I wish they'd do something. Wait a minute, they're on their way. Paul! 
What? There's a telephone in the cabin. Where? I think it's... It's in that cabinet on your left. Okay. I heard it. Hello? Hello? Hello, operator. Disconnected. Did you say it was disconnected? Either that or they just cut the wire. Yeah, that's what happened. One of them just cut the wires. Where are they going? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they changed their minds, huh? No, I doubt it. Well, then why would they drive away? Well, they didn't go far. But why did they go at all? They're not sure whether I got a gun or not. If I have one, they know they're asking for it if they rush the cabin. How long can we stay here? Jenny. Jenny, we're leaving now. But you said they're just down the road. We're going to leave on foot. What? Tell me. Can you walk much in those shoes you got on? But yes, the, the heels are pretty low. Why? All right, all right. We'll head into the woods. Go east as far as we can. We'll sleep out in the open tonight. And we'll head for the first house we see when daylight hits. All right, Paul. I'm going to go out first. You follow me in a couple of seconds. Yes. Now help me with this table in front of the door. I, I don't want to slide it. All right. It looks clear. A few seconds, Jenny, remember that. Then follow me. I will. Slugs left in the gun. I'm going to use them. Get back, Jenny. I got to break this window. You out there? Why don't you come in and get me? All right. All right, I'll come out and get you. Take it easy. You're going to be fine. Who are you? Police. Jenny. Where's Jenny? Here I am, darling. When... When did they get here? Just after you came out shooting. How did you find me? Roger Miller called us after you got the gun from his father. But... How did you know where to look? You left the receiver off the hook in the service station. There we checked all the side roads looking for a big gasoline stain where you might have turned off the main road. Gasoline? The attendant was still pumping gas into your car when you drove away. You never got the chance to replace the cap on your tank. Oh. We'll pick it up some other time. 
Won't we, Jenny? Yes, Paul. We'll pick it up some other time. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Broderick Crawford. This is Harlow Wilcox again. Whatever your favorite charity, local or national, you may help it collect thousands of dollars by just printing your name and address. That's all you do to enter the Autolite family charity drawing. And if you are one of 25 chosen, you'll name any recognized charity you wish for a share of $100,000. Your friends and neighbors are signing up enthusiastically. Listen to this typical comment by an Elizabeth, New Jersey woman. This is Mrs. Morris Cohen, who just signed up for this drawing. Now, Mrs. Cohen, when you signed, did you have any difficulties whatsoever? None at all. Just sign my name and address. I see. Should your name be selected, how would you care to designate the money? Three chapters in Elizabeth. The Shrevia Palsy, the Heart Fund, the Cancer. I think that's wonderful, and may I wish you good luck. Thank you. So give your favorite recognized charity the opportunity of a lifetime. Sign up at any or all of these Autolite family car showrooms. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Do it tomorrow, sure. And now, Betty Goody of Radio TV Mirror Magazine and the producer of Suspense, Elliot Lewis. It is my pleasure, Elliot, to inform you that the readers of Radio TV Mirror again have selected Suspense as their favorite radio mystery program. Here is your award, a gold medal and a scroll, and congratulations to you and Autolite. Thank you very much, Betty, and thanks also to all you Suspense listeners who voted for us. You'll find an interesting story and pictures on the annual awards in the current issue of Radio TV Mirror magazine. Next week, the story of a man who tried to learn a lesson the hard way. He bet his life on the turn of a card... It's called The Card Game. Our star, Mr. Richard Widmark. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The role to panic was written for Suspense by Ross Murray. In tonight's story, Paula Winslow was heard as Jenny. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Junius Matthews, High Aberbeck, and Barney Phillips. Roderick Crawford may soon be seen co-starring with Gregory Peck in the 20th Century Fox picture, Night People. And remember, next week, Mr. Richard Widmark in The Card Game. This is the CBS Radio Network.